What's up guys? So what's growing on? Pete here with Green Dreams and I'm gonna give you a little bit of a nursery update today. Kinda wanna answer some of the questions I've been getting, calls I've been getting, emails I've been getting, etc. Um, you know, we're in 2021, mid-March right now, and last year we kind of experienced a little bit of a seed shortage, kind of on a nationwide scale. I think that seed shortage is actually getting a lot worse this year. And what I could tell you we're having even a bigger problem with is a plant shortage. And I'm not even talking about just edibles. This goes in ornamentals, standard landscaping, and edibles for sure. So, you know, there isn't enough edible nurseries here in the state of Florida. Um, there isn't enough people doing propagation, grafting, air layering. And unfortunately, a lot of the big nurseries that are doing it, they're shipping their plants to Arizona, they're shipping their plants to Texas, they're shipping their plants to California. So the one, you know, the nurseries that are here, that material isn't even all staying here. So, you know, every day my phone rings, every day I get a phone call. Um, you know, I need 150 trees, I need 200 trees, I need 50 trees. And, you know, 99% of the time lately, you know, I have to tell people I'm sorry. You know, I can't help you. Um, we've actually cut off, cut off being able to purchase some of the grafted trees just because I can't keep these things in stock, especially when we're talking about mangoes. Um, avocados, carambola is a really big one that's just been blowing out of here. And you know, just to point out, the last time I went to pick up fruit trees, uh, carambola trees, they were like a foot and a half tall. They had just been potted up in three gallons. Um, you know, there was nothing I could do. I, they had the variety I wanted. That was the size they're at. I didn't have a choice. I purchased them. Um, they were gone in two weeks. Fifty trees. So went back down to see another one of my growers. He only had them in one gallons. He said they were coming out of the nursery in two weeks. They'd be potted up. I could buy them in three weeks. I said I can't wait. You know, I really want to get my hands on those trees. He said, Well, you could have them for three gallon prices right now in a one gallon. I purchased them. Um, we grew them up. We potted them up. So you know, smaller trees, higher price. Normal size trees, higher price. Typically speaking, what I'm seeing out there is, you know, I'm seeing three gallon trees in seven, seven gallon pots. I'm seeing seven gallon trees in 15 gallon pots. So plants are undersized. There's not enough of them. I just talked to another grower the other day and he said, Pete, you know, there is a big lack of what we're calling the three P's, plants, patients, and people. So, you know, please bear with us just so y'all know, you know, um, most of my nursery, the reasons I even have a nursery is for my installs, for my clients, for the ones we're doing designs for. So. I have to retain some of these plants for jobs that we have coming up on installs. I am doing my best to keep up production. We've just hired two more people in the nursery staff, working on expanding the nursery. I've talked about that in some other videos, working on looking for a full-time grafter. I'm definitely getting deeper and larger into the nursery industry. Um, but as of right now, we just can't even keep up. So the nursery's looking pretty good, but very, very sparse and limited. So certain things like you know mulberries and figs and some of our support plants, we're doing a fairly good job of keeping up, but other things we just have limited numbers. Um, you know, a couple of ice cream bean, a couple of white sapote. There's some longans back there. There's some uh, bay leaf back there. There's some allspice back there. Got some pomegranates, got some macadamia nuts. I have a few carambola. Like I said, I'm retaining those for jobs. So um, yeah, I get people to come in here and they want to buy 10 carambola trees. I have to limit that, you know, maybe I'll let one go. I think I've actually, like I said, cut them off until I can get some more of uh, my favorite varieties and start offering them out to you guys again. So we're doing our best over here, I promise. Um, Barbados cherry, I have a decent amount of, um, but you know, I say a decent amount, 50. 50 can go kind of fast. Some bananas just barely hanging in. We've got some peaches, we got some plums. Um, one thing that we are really, really focused on is just staying stocked up on things for our online store, these smaller support plants, these four inch items. Um, you know, we've been really pumping out the plants every week, shipping a ton of material. I think last week, 215 items went out. So thank you guys for the support. Been getting some awesome feedback. The packing and the shipping team has been doing a really good job of getting those plants safely in packages, getting them to your, your door. I also think that since Christmas, um, and then since last year, UPS is finally catching up. The plants are even getting there a little bit quicker. So that makes a huge difference. Um, Okinawa and spinach is finally coming back. You know, gets a little bit rough looking in the winter time. Looks like we've got lots of guavas coming up. Um, sweet almond, Thai dwarf mulberry. That's probably the only Thai dwarf mulberry I have available in a little four inch. And those are sold normally before they can even get to ones or three gallons. So not a lot of those available for the customers right now. Lots of cranberry hibiscus coming up. Um, lots of quinoa hibiscus. We've got society garlic and chives in here. We've got lots of the, um, not lots, I say lots, um, 50 maybe of the variegated society garlic. 
some of the Celosia coming up. Um, Turk's cap, I do my best to keep this one in stock. We use these a ton on jobs. I just used 35 on a project last week. So a lot of these plants, like I said, we started this nursery. I got into this nursery business specifically to have the plants for the jobs because when it came time to do the jobs, I had to go three, four, five, six, seven different nurseries all around the state. Um, it was nearly impossible to get my hands on the material. So really, like I said, the nursery started just to have this material on hand when it was time to do these jobs. Um, this is the original nursery area. I'll take you guys over to the other side real quick and just kind of give you a rundown. Um, lots of edible leaf hibiscus coming up in here. A couple of olives left. We have been shipping out some olives. Um, Inga edulis, red jupoticabos. This is kind of more of a dappled light shade area. Lots of pineapples coming up for the online store. Got a lot of the special varieties, elite special. Um, or Florida Elite. What do we got here? What do we got here? I gotta stop guessing. White Jade, which has an edible core. That's a really good one. A bunch more of the Japotacabas. So the girls, or I say the girls, um, my nursery manager Katarina is actually in Guatemala this week. So we're really taking a week off to get caught up around here. They're just pulling weeds and just trying to get restocked while she's gone. So not even taking any orders this week. Um, Sisu spinach, we've got that skinny leaf one still. A lot of those flew out ever since I made the last video here on the nursery update. So thank you guys for the support. Um, thank you, Tanya, for getting me that plant. Oh, we can go down this aisle real quick. So got lots of chaya. Got some little calyandras coming up. Another variety of chaya. Um, toilet paper plant, perennial penta. This is the edible fruit, tibicina. Um, Tropical sages coming up. Uh, this is that skinny leaf sisu spinach. Lots of little bananas. That's the vente coho. That one's supposed to fruit really, really fast. That's the green banana. Um, Grand Nain. Looks like dwarf cavendash. These ones took some cold damage. Like I said, these are a seed. They're gonna come back. You're gonna get another banana coming up, taking its place. Got some chocolate mint here. Um, some more of that Miami spinach, sisu spinach. Looks like we got some goji berry sometimes. I don't even know where that came from. Whoa, can't keep up. Uh, bee balm and some more bananas. And a really popular one is the perennial peanut. So lots of four inch perennial peanut coming up. Sugar apples just starting to sprout back out after a long winter. And as you can tell, a little bit thin around here. So doing our best to keep stuff in stock. I'm actually out of three gallon strawberry trees too. That's a really popular one. That yellow montingia um, has been blowing out of here. The red one's been blowing out of here. Do I peek in the greenhouse real quick while we're over here? Oh, got the crazies at it. Hey, 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 I'm trying to make a video. Seriously, seriously? What's up Kiki, they've been wondering about you big girl. What are you thinking? All right, there's my big girl. So some of our breeder figs over here and the last of the avocados. I'll say I got about six or eight varieties of avocados and everybody wants eight avocados, six avocados. I've been letting one or two go, really trying to retain most of those for installs, working on getting more, just so you guys know. Um, every week I'm traveling the state, East Coast, South Florida, Pine Island, um, anywhere, wherever, whenever. I hear there's any kind of plants available. I'm out trying to get them. I'm not even waiting for these guys to deliver them just because if you wait, somebody else will find them. So it is becoming really hard to get your hands on plants. Hey, hey, what's up big girl? Yep, and she drools. All right, so what we've been shipping out of here are lots of reds and scarlets and four inch material. Everybody always asks me, why is the scarlet so expensive? Well, number one, the scarlet actually fruits in sometimes three years from seed, um, as short as, typically three to four years. These guys get a freak die off. So this makes me really quite sad. Um, you know, every once in a while, I don't know why I come in here. Um, and this is, this is a common trait with the scarlets. They'll come up, they'll get some growth on them, they'll look pretty good, and then boom, they crash. So, um, Maybe 20% of the scarlets that I've had that have come up have crashed. Really not some great numbers that I'd like to see. I mean, there's dead one, dead one, dead one, dead one. There's seven, eight dead ones in here. A um, couple dead ones in the four inch. I never ever have that problem with the reds. Never have the problem with any of the other varieties actually. Um, the whites all do really good. You can see these are all just nice and dense. And the Japotacaba house is looking amazing. 
Got some up in my house covered in fruit right now. And these ones in here actually have some fruit on them too. Let's see what's growing on. Oh, got jabuticabas. Oh, I see you. Oh, okay, red variety. So I would say for like a beginner Japotacaba collector, the red is the one to start with or the Sabra. But if you want to get fruit, it's probably start with the red. Um, the skin's edible on this one. So it's not that it's not edible on the Sabra. It's just not as good. It tends to have some tannins in it. Um, where the red one is phenomenal. Mm. It was kind of cool out last night, so that fruit's a little bit cool. Typically when I'm eating Japotacabas, they're a little warm, so I did notice that chilled, these things are quite amazing. Mm. And then of course, you know, we save and plant the seed. Oh, I'm gonna put that here, let the nursery girl get her hands on it. But Japotacabas fruiting in here. This one's got fruit and flowers on it. This one's got some flowers coming in. And the Japotacaba house is going off. So that's what's growing on in here. Let's go over to the other nursery. I'll give you guys a quick little update there and then I gotta get to work, hold tight. I just thought I'd sneak in a quick little update on this green mulberry that we planted. Um, if y'all don't know, this is the green mulberry. This is ripe. These are grafted. Um, might have a couple of these left, but not really. I shouldn't even say that. And these actually ripen green, so just like this. And they are the most ridiculous, sweetest mulberry you've ever had. Phenomenal. I like the fact that they ripen green because they get less bird and pest pressure, so they'll end up on the tree a lot longer. And you can see that's a fairly long fruit, kind of like the Pakistani. There's another one that's almost ready, but has a couple more days right here. The only way to tell is really when they plump up. So, green mulberry, off the chain. All right, so back over here on the other side of the farm, and this is the full sun area. This is the larger nursery we have here on the property, and all of my grafted loquats are over here. Some um, collecting varieties of bananas. What's left of my mangoes, and that's one that I am struggling to keep in stock. There is maybe one, two, grafters on scale here in the state of Florida for mangoes. So not very common. There's one or two other nurseries starting to try to do it, but for the most part, the ones that have been doing it, maybe two, maybe three nurseries throughout the state that are at a scale here for mangoes. The big one being on the East Coast. I made a video there, Zills. So needs more people doing mangoes here in Florida to say the least. I have, you know, maybe 18, 20 trees left, really trying to retain those for installs. Um, got some big loquats and reason for that is last year because of COVID the loquat festival was canceled um, I really stocked up probably about 200 trees before the festival which is a good problem because now I'm down to maybe 80 trees um, and the ones that got really big are in 15 gallons so I have some bigger trees available some sevens some 15s and these grafted varieties um, lots of chass or vitex and I've actually selected a vitex variety that is much more dwarfing compared to one that I have that gets to be about eight to 10 foot. So just like the sweet almond, we have a dwarf, we have a full size. I have a dwarf and a full size on the Vitex chast tree also. Um, this is that special variety of uh, Louisiana sugar cane. Um, this is all perennial peanut, some goldenrod, some different guavas. Um, back over there, we have some uh, persimmons, probably about five varieties of persimmons. And we've got lots of natives in here, bee balm in here, firebush in here salvia is in here um mexican sunflower just got cut back took a little bit of that cold damage um coral honeysuckle native what else we got growing on in here so big old nursery uh tick seed i see down over there um there's some of that sweet almond there's the dwarf caliandra these are all of our different varieties of figs got a few grapes and the one thing that I am still fairly stocked on are mulberries um, and this is like mulberry land in here we are just pumping right now lots of fruit what's growing on whoa all right got mulberries so this is obviously an everbearing variety uh, mulberries are going off around the farm right now though easily fill my hand here whoa just dropped one walking around so got mulberries? Yeah, we need to pick a couple up. These things are absolutely delicious. And if you haven't had a mulberry, it's like a 
raspberry and a blueberry made love or something. They're unbelievable. Some of my best childhood memories are actually eating these things. Um, they're a favorite. So if you can grow mulberries, grow mulberries. Uh, some of my John Starnes Rose, Society Garlic, more field dug bananas, giant milkweed, elderberry, regular Suriname cherry, black Suriname cherry. What's left of our papayas, we got a bunch more coming. Some uh, different varieties of bamboo. Just made that bamboo update. Probably have six or seven varieties always in stock. Try our best to keep up with that one. Um, lots of vetiver grass that's been super popular this year. Lots of Fakahatchee grass. And we got some of our nitrogen fixing trees and katuk and chaya over there. Pineapple guavas, native coffee, um, catley guavas. That's our native tea bush, which is a really cool looking one flowers all the time too it's a favorite for us as far as for bringing in pollinators and beneficial insects whoa so i see that world's best going off over here and you cannot miss the fruits on these guys what so nice fat fruit i mean seriously geeking out on mulberries katarina my nursery manager told me i need to get over here and make a video and she wasn't joking um right now Whatever doesn't get eaten by us is probably just going to the birds. So, mouthful of mulberries. Yep. Look at these things. I could just totally load up. Oh, overachiever. So that's that world's best. Look at all that fruit. Woo! Enough about mulberries. I'm just gonna eat them. Mmm. Mmm off the chain little guy aren't you cute that world's best is much bigger so I guess something exciting to point out about mulberries my good friend Josh Jameson over at Hart and Craig Hempworth um, up in Gainesville have been doing a little bit of an experiment with mulberries that are more resistant to root knot nematodes so down here in Florida mulberries can be affected by nematodes I've had some trees after five, six years, just completely stopped production. Um, and it was the nematodes. We pull them up out of the ground. It looks like a pearl necklace literally on the roots. So they are starting to graft some of these different mulberries onto a different rootstock. And out of 10, 15 different rootstocks that they've tried out, it seems like Sixth Street and Estero Giant are the two that seem to be the most nematode resistant. They're having the best luck grafting there. So I have a feeling going forward, you're going to see a lot more mulberries grafted being sold. Um, not a lot of people doing it right now. Definitely a lot of room in that market, but I'm kind of excited to keep our eyes on here going forward in the mulberry land. So I see some native muscadines. I see some milkweed in there. I see caliandra flowers in the distance. And doing our best to keep this place full right now. We've got the Barbie pink. I got the white to call. And I think I have a third variety of guava in there. All right, so that was a little bit of a nursery update. Just wanted to show you guys what was going on around here. Give you a little update just on plants in general. Um, if you're trying to find plants, if you're trying to plant out a grove, if you're trying to do your own project, just take what you can get. Um, you know, I've told so many people, piecemeal it together. If you can buy five trees here, five trees there, and you got to do that at 10 different nurseries, that's just probably what you're going to have to do this year just because there's not going to be a lot of places that are going to have everything you need in stock. Um, I definitely see some more nurseries popping up over the next few years um, just trying to keep up with the demand of this so it is really kind of quite exciting to see that many people wanting to get into the edibles wanting to grow edibles um, more people planting groves so it's great the movement is growing it's a good thing problem is there's not enough people growing and to keep up with the demand so we're doing our best over here to keep up with that just wanted to give you guys a little update video so if you buy plants from us they're a little bit smaller than they used to be just understand it's just the nature of the beast right now with everything that's going on in the industry. So be patient, hold tight, don't worry. Um, plants grow fast. So it doesn't matter if it's a little bit smaller, it will come up. Um, just a matter of time, give it some love, give it some attention. So hope you guys enjoyed this quick nursery update. If you haven't subscribed yet, maybe go ahead and do so. Most importantly around here, get out there and pound some dirt.